cultural, historical, and resistance consciousness that one finds in prison is but a reflection of the low level one finds in the streets, the apparent triumph of the civil rights movement. I say apparent because I believe it's more appearance than substance, has led us to this age when millions of young blacks not only don't know their rich history of rebellion and resistance, they don't want to know. Their eyes seek only the streets. That is their battleground, and their targets are each other. A few years ago, I heard from several dozen college students who were reading passages from my book, We Want Freedom, A Life in the Black Panther Party. Almost all of them, including several graduate students, expressed surprise at the depth of black resistance they learned from the book's opening chapter, history they never knew, nor were ever taught, even in inner-city schools. Many only learned about Martin Luther King or George Washington Carver in school, but little beyond that. They received black history light, a sweet, almost deracialized history, where things were once bad, but Reverend Dr. King saved us, and our people finally got the vote. When they read of the long, hard, and brutal freedom struggles of black folks and about how our people still really ain't free, they're surprised and angry, surprised at what they didn't know, angry that they weren't taught. Meanwhile, while those destined to rule, those in college, learn about the history of black revolutionary resistance, those who are captives, the descendants of those who fought those fierce battles for freedom, show disdain for black shit and study if anything, how to hustle on increasingly barren streets. The dynamics could hardly be more dire. Those of us who know our people's history and who know the power of that history must find some way to break through to our young, to reach them, to surprise them, yes, to anger them. We are reminded of our brave ancestor, the revered Harriet Tubman, a woman called Moses, who single-handedly brought 1,000 black souls out of slavery through the Underground Railroad. Her response, when honored for her freedom-fighting achievements, are as apt now as they were then. She replied, I would have been able to free a 1,000 more slaves if I could only have convinced them that they were slaves. Young people, especially those in modern-day captivity, must be exposed to the works of people like Malcolm X, Dr. Huey P. Newton, Dr. Angela Y. Davis, and George Jackson. It is their history that they must own, if only to gain a true knowledge of freedom. Thank you. From Death Row, this is Mumia Abu-Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio.